Aquarius Risings, this October 2020 is actually exciting for you in some ways. There is the background tension that we all have in certain areas of our life because of the devastating 2020 astrology, but for you there are some definite plans in long-term travel or schooling or embarking on a journey. If you are excited to dive into what the astrology, the tarot deck, and the oracle deck cards have in store for you for this month, make sure that you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so that you are always up to date with what the stars have in store for you. This video is brought to you by my very own Astrology Academy course. I've been working on this course for so many months, testing it, refining it, reiterating it, and making it the product that I would have wanted for me to start out when I was learning astrology. So all the information is below if that's something that you're interested in, as well as a one hour webinar that I did, which is just a very, very brief overview to how to start learning astrology. So that if you know that you wanna commit, you can look at that down below. But if you are more interested in like dipping your toe in or seeing what astrology exactly is, the webinar is also linked down below. Either way, I'm excited to start learning with you in the weeks and months and future to come. Hi, I'm Erin. I am a professional astrologer, author, and philosophy student. I combine traditional Hellenistic astrology techniques with modern psychological counseling dynamics in order to provide grounded spiritual guidance. This whole entire month we do have Mars in your Aries 3rd house, scoring Saturn, Pluto, and Jupiter in your Capricorn 12th house. There is this uh, decisive tension between you trying to put out content or be creative and communicative in like an output kind of way, and that being at odds with what the changes in your interior world are asking for. You really could feel like on the inside you're being called to slow down or to like stop creating or to like just completely take time for yourself and yet you feel the need to rethink and redo and make all these projects even better. And so there's this tension the whole month between productivity and internal softness in a way. On the first through the fifth, we have Jupiter in your Capricorn 12th house, sextiling Neptune in your Pisces second house. And this is a year long aspect that's kind of like better than nothing. There's not really anything more positive or breakthrough growth oriented for the rest of 2020. This is an outer planet aspect here for the whole year. So this is not new, but it's particularly activated right now around the long-term work that you're putting into your internal self, your psychology, your spiritual practices, you really are dedicating your time to bettering yourself, and that ends up helping you out financially in some ways, that you might be making money off of your spiritual insights, or you might be finding more, um, like you might be meditating on the stock market and like you're getting conclusions and information and that may, allows you to make money in a certain way, but spiritual practices are helping you out financially. On the first, we do have an Aries full moon across your Aries, Libra, third house, ninth house axis in your first house, um, happening on the first. So full video for that is down below. This is a culmination or a completion or like an embarking and letting go of something around education. In particular, your higher educational plans needing you to let go of a routine of like the way that you're getting information here and now that you're like okay i'm gonna i'm gonna leave what i know and i'm gonna go to this college or like i'm gonna leave what i know and i'm gonna start studying my true passion that sort of energy i recommend you watch the video because it's a very like anarchistic rebellious full moon on the 10th through the 19th Middle of the month, the sun in your Libra ninth house is squaring Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto in your Capricorn 12th house. So there is a definite focus on your higher education or this path to wisdom that you're embarking on by the middle of the month, but that is at odds as well with your self-care and with the way that you are breaking down habits that drain your energy. So you're having to negotiate your goals with how you need to take care of yourself. On the 11th, we do have Venus in your Virgo 8th house, trining Uranus in your Taurus 4th house. So this is a cute aspect of possibly because of some investments or some trading or even some death, you could be getting something uh, positively surprising from your family. Um, this is kind of weird, but I mean, if a family member does pass away and you get an inheritance, this, this is indicating like positivity around that. So it might be someone that you didn't like know very well, or this can indicate that you are investing in something that allows you to build a home or a family environment. There's some sudden financial or some sudden um, death oriented events that allow you to build something in terms of home or family that is very supportive. On the 13th, we have the sun in your Libra ninth house opposing Mars in your Aries third house. So the aspirations or the pursuit that you're going after in terms of your higher education is at odds with some of the information in your day-to-day -day environment. You might be like pursuing some political science degree and you live in like Hicktown red state, like something like that where you're pursuing something for the long term and it, it's at odds with your immediate environment. And you might be like, when am I gonna get out of here? And that is kind of the dilemma right here right now. On the 16th though, we do have a new moon 
in your Libra ninth house. Full videos down below, but this new moon, oof, this is a new moon. This is a new beginning that's trying to be cute in the middle of a battlefield. So it's kind of like you are saying yes to your long-term pursuit of knowledge, or even like if you're seeing yourself moving to a new country, even if you're moving long distance right now, this is you doing that in the middle of whatever shit show is happening around you and like your loved one's lives. You're like, I'm gonna do me, I'm gonna pursue my truth right here and now, and even if that means leaving you guys, I'm gonna do it. On the 18th, we do have Venus in your Virgo 8th house opposing Neptune in your Pisces 2nd house. So this does indicate some financial uh, delusion or lack of clarity by the middle of the month. I would avoid investing. I would definitely in avoid um, committing to a financial decision that feels really good but doesn't have the backing behind it. So like, don't do anything financially um, risky this month, I would say. On the 18th through the 25th, we do have Venus in your Virgo 8th house, trining Jupiter, Saturn, and Pluto in your Capricorn 12th house. So trusting another person financially might actually be the spiritual choice or might help you out internally. That if you were like, I'm not going to deal with this financially, I'm going to trust that you're going to do it because I don't feel like I have the information. Like if you're outsourcing to a consultant or to like parents even, that could really take some of the stress off of your plate. So trusting in someone else um, who might be more detail oriented than you the middle of the month is a really supportive decision. The month does end on a more abrasive whoa note with the sun in your Scorpio 10th house opposing Uranus in your Taurus 4th house. So some liberation or some wild card upheaval energy in your home or living situation or with your parents definitely is changing your career outlook for the end of the month. This isn't good or bad, it's just very shocking, like something is happening at home and you're like, whoa, that reverberates out into my career for the time being. If you do have any thoughts around the astrology coming up this October for you, do let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you before we do get into some tarot cards. So for a tarot card for Aquarius Risings, for this, let's, this is breaking, for this October, let's pull a card. Four of Swords reversed. And the Four of Swords upright deals with like needing rest. Four of Swords reversed usually deals with like get out and enjoy yourself. That you finding your center might mean getting out of your own head. So the most like spiritual practice for you to find your center this month might be going out to like a rave if that's safe or connecting with friends or doing something where you really get out of your rut, like it throws you into experiences, is probably the way for you to find your balance in a certain way. So lastly, we'll pull a Work Your Light Oracle deck card to see what guidance is coming through right here. Don't dim to fit in. How are you dimming your light in order to fit in? Even as this is a more internal time, pursuing, especially in terms of study or wisdom or like what excites your soul? What do you need to stop dimming in order to fit in and actually, actually explore on a wisdom-based level in your life that would be the fulfilling path? If you enjoyed this and you would like to check out my personal consultations below, if I am open for readings, I would love to read for you. And if I'm not right now at this time, you will be notified of a waitlist and uh, please just join so that you can hear when I am reopened. But other things, astrology webinar is down below, one hour to really get you started and um, learn from me directly, you know, what the, the first things I would guide you on are. Astrology Academy is down below if you are ready to dive into this on a semester-esque, really committed level. I'm excited to learn with you in that way. But either way, do let me know down below any thoughts that you have about this October. Would love to hear from you. Like, subscribe, do all of the things. And sending so much love. I will see you in the next one. Oh, there is one thing. You're all